The topic I will cover today is delayed cot clamping. So, uh, I will first explain why delayed cot clamping is important and then the benefits and how we go about it. So, when the fetus is in the womb, obviously the oxygenation, the supply of nutrients happens from the placenta. So, the placenta has two parts, the maternal part where the mother's veins enter into the placental sinuses where the blood pools and the fetal part where the fetal blood vessels actually come close, the capillaries take this nutrients and oxygen from the mother's part of the sinusoids and this blood comes into the fetus. Because the oxygenation is done by the placenta, the fetal lung does not actually breathe. It is obvious the fetal lung is filled with fluid and because the blood flow going through the lungs is needed only to encourage the growth of the lung and not actually to carry the oxygen as it happens after birth, only about 10 percent of the blood volume enters the lung. The placenta has 20 to 30 percent of the blood volume uh, that the fetus circulation has. This is actually the fetal blood itself and you can assume that this is the blood that will enter the lungs of the baby after the baby starts breathing after birth. So, during the in utero period you can consider the placenta holds the blood that is meant for the lung and uh, the blood, this fetal blood volume actually has so many additional nutrients, it has stem cells which help the baby's uh, repair mechanism, it has immune factors, mainly the antibodies that have been transferred from the mother during the pregnancy. So, if you lose out 20 to 30 ml or uh, 20 ml per kilo of this blood, it is a big loss in terms of future benefits. Of course, any extra blood volume reduces the risk of anemia and in a premature baby who already has a lower blood volume you are going to make the baby a little at risk of hypotension, low blood pressure, other hemodynamic changes and of, of course, the oxygen carrying ability of the blood itself is affected. So, this is just to illustrate that the blood which is in the fetal part of the placenta actually belongs to the baby, it should come back to the baby after birth. So, that is a natural process and uh, what happened in the past 40 years or so when the obstetrics became more medicalized, people started clamping the cord soon after the baby is born. But in the past 15 years or so, we have realized this is a wrong practice and delayed cord clamping has been focused on. For the past 10 years or so, it is part of the NRP and everyone has started doing it better. We need to encourage people to do it more in the premature babies as well. And uh, it is actually the premature babies who will have more direct immediate benefits because they already have a lower uh, hemoglobin, they have a lower immune uh, factor transferred from the mother and they have a low blood volume, they are sicker and they are at risk of hemodynamic instability. So, delayed cot clamping is nothing but waiting for the baby to breathe for a few breaths uh, and at least 30 seconds to 1 minute after birth before we clamp the cord. There are some situations where cot clamping cannot be delayed milking of the cord is a factor which you can consider before you clamp the cord in these situations. In a very small extreme premature baby milking of the cord can increase the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage so that is not recommended but beyond the 28 weeks onwards you can consider milking the cord as well. So, I hope I have convinced you that we need to do delayed cord clamping in every baby as far as we can. In terms of a baby who has uh, exposure to uh, fetal distress or comes out in a asphyxiated situation, uh, we are not sure what exactly to do and currently there are many studies going on to bring the resuscitator to the mother's womb side or the uh, cesarean section abdominal uh, wall side so that we can start giving the breaths to the baby if the baby is not breathing by the mother's side before we clamp the cord. So, the lung is open, the blood comes in and then we clamp the cord. So, this is going to come in the future and most units are working towards that. Uh, the other group we are concerned about is growth restricted babies, whether this extra blood volume, they are already a bit polycythemic. But remember that this uh, delayed cord clamping, uh, it is an automatic process and the baby is not going to get more blood than what is due and the volume, it is not just the red blood cells that come, it brings in the volume of fluid as well. So, because uh, the fluid volume increases, it is not going to be increasing the viscosity. So, even in growth restricted babies, unless there is any severe concern, it is recommended to do at least 30 seconds of delayed cord clamping. When a premature baby is born, we need to encourage the obstetricians that uh, the baby is not going to cry because these are small babies. If uh, the cord pulsation is felt to be normal in the 80 to 100 beats range, you continue to feel the cord pulsation. That means the baby is in a good condition and you delay at least again 30 seconds to 1 minute. And in the premature babies, we need to make sure that the labor room temperature is maintained so the baby does not get cold. The uh, baby should be held at or slightly below the level of the uh, introitus and in the case of cesarean on the abdominal wall no, not uh, or to the side. Baby should not be lifted above because this is going to make the blood flow 
uh, there is no pump on the placental side. So, the blood flow goes by gravity and the normal uh, suction mechanism of the lung opening and blood uh, redistributing. So, if you take the baby at a higher level, it is not going to flow more easily. So, two or three things, one is feel the cord pulsation, adjust the room temperature in the labor room. So, you are comfortable uh, delaying the cord clamping. Try to plan moving the resuscitator uh, to the mother's side if you have the option. Uh, the newer uh, devices are available if you can get that. Then even in babies needing resuscitation, you can consider. Milking of the cord can be done in bigger premature babies and in term babies where you cannot do delayed cord clamping for any reason. Then the question of uh, stem cell banking comes in. Stem cell banking is something which is evolving. We still do not know how much beneficial it will be. It is possible you may use it uh, in occasional cases, especially in siblings. But in the baby, delayed cord clamping has immediate benefits. So, do not avoid delayed cord clamping just to get a better harvest for stem cell harvesting. If you get the stem cells after you give the baby, it is due with delayed cord clamping well and good. Of course, the actual volume extracted may drop, but uh, it is still better for the baby to get something immediately, which is definitely beneficial than to deprive the baby of this thinking of something in the future, which may never be needed. So, this is my uh, take on delayed cord clamping. I hope uh, this important message can reach more people. Do share it.